you want to hear how you can have a mountain moving life, you want a mountain moving life, come right back. Welcome back, my friends. I am so excited about what God is going to do in your life. God is going to move mountains in your life. I'm declaring that over your life in Jesus' name. God's going to move those mountains. And so we, we talked about in my last message about Isaiah. Isaiah, God commissioned Isaiah to speak his words. And it says in the book of Isaiah chapter 40, Isaiah said, do you not know or have you not heard? So Isaiah's telling the people, he's telling them, you want a mountain moving life? Then you, have you heard or do you know? He sticks closer to you than a brother. He gives strength to the weary. He increases the power of the weak. Even youths, the young babies, will grow tired and weary. He said, and young men may stumble and fall, but those who hope in the Lord, the ones that hope in the Lord will renew their strength. You want to get strength. There is the key. You've got to get your hope in the Lord, and God will give you the strength. He said, they will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. So when you look up in the sky and look around you, you see birds. An eagle is the, is the biggest bird, the most, I mean, God uses the symbolism of an eagle often in scripture to help us see how majestic he is. You think you're at your last place of tribulation. The trial's too hard. You think you're going to give up and throw in the towel? God says, not on my watch. If you, if you give it to me, I'm going to give you hope. I'm going to raise you up. And so we see Isaiah tell the people, like I'm telling you, you want to see the mountains move in your life, you got to go to God. God, when he becomes your very best friend, when God becomes everything to you, you're going to see turnarounds after turnarounds. God will move mountains when you have faith to believe in him, you can say to this mountain, move. If you even have faith as small as a mustard seed, you can say to that mountain, move, and it's going to move in Jesus' name. You got to claim that for your life. You got to believe it for your life, and you got to say it over your life. You got to have a mountain moving mouth. You got to say these words and have faith to move the mountains. Daniel, another prophet. We talked about Isaiah. Now I want to talk about Daniel. Daniel is another person in the Old Testament. And Daniel had to come to a point in his life with God to either fully accept him and receive everything God says or reject him. He was given a choice. And so Daniel, when he, he's, he comes before God, and he's talking about prayers and he's talking about mountains moving. And God uses an angel to strike Daniel's mouth. God strikes his mouth through an angel. He gives him an, a mountain moving mouth. And so here we see Daniel in chapter 10. Daniel says, do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. God said to Daniel, do not be afraid. Since the first day that you set your mind to gain understanding and to humble yourself before God, your words were heard, and I have come in response to them, Daniel. Put your name in there. Since the first day you brought your mountain that you have in your life before God, Marla, whatever your name is that's listening, since the first day you brought it before the Lord, 
God is listening. God is hearing. That's what he's telling Daniel. I heard every prayer. I heard everything you said to me. When you brought it to me, I heard it. And he said, your words were heard. You got to get that mountain to move. You got to move those words. And I have come in response to them. God says, I'm coming in response to your prayer. I'm coming in response to your words, to your faith. Daniel prayed and he didn't give up on waiting for God's answer. So the prince of Persia, the kingdom, he resisted Daniel and his prayers for 21 days. But see, he didn't give up. That's the key. We don't give up. Don't give up. Daniel kept pressing in. He kept praying. He kept believing. And so we see Michael, one of the chief princes, came to help him. There's a spiritual battle, and if you don't think spiritual battles are real, then you haven't been in a real battle, because spiritual battles are real. He said, I was detained there by the king of Persia, the demonic spirits, but now I have come, the angel says to Daniel, I have come to explain to you what will happen to your people in the future, for the vision concerns a time to come. And while he was saying this to me, I bowed with my face toward the ground and was speechless. The one who looked like a man touched my lips, and I opened my mouth, and I began to speak. I said to the one standing before me, I am overcome with ang anguish because of the vision, my Lord, and I feel very weak. Have any of you ever felt very weak? You feel weak because of the problem. You feel weak because you feel like it can never change. He said, how can I, your servant, talk with you, my Lord? My strength is gone, and I can hardly breathe. Have you ever felt like you can hardly breathe? I certainly have. Have you been in a situation where your child has gotten into a problem where you can barely breathe over it? Or you found out there's an illness, and, and it's so overwhelming you can't hardly breathe? All of us have had those trials or those tribulations that have literally knocked the breath out of us. That's what Daniel's saying. So the administrators are so jealous of Daniel. Daniel's heart is right before God. Daniel's praying. He's got favor. So they set him up for defeat. They tell the king, hey, king, don't you want to have a rule and a law in the land that only people can pray to you as the king? And if they pray to any other god, then they will be wiped out. They talked the king into doing this. So the king agrees to this, and he puts his signet ring on it, and they talk him into it. But really what they were doing is they were jealous of Daniel. They were trying to get Daniel in a trap. Daniel has been praying to God. We've heard him. He's been praying three times a day, and you said it's against the law. So that means Daniel's got to face a penalty and face the punishment of death. The king says, you're right, I have to stick by my word. So now the punishment is death, and they're going to throw Daniel into a pit with a lion. Because we all know the lion kills people. I mean, if you get around a lion, think about it. Have you ever been to the zoo? I've been to the zoo. You go to the zoo, and lions are behind what? They're behind a glass. They're in barriers. Because if we were next to a lion, it would attack us and we would die. I mean, lions are the head of the prey. I was in Africa one time, and there was a big fenced-in area of lions. And I remember thinking, I sure hope that lion can't get over that fence, because I know if you get it next to a lion, you're going to die. So the king is dreading this. He knows Daniel's going to go into that lion's den, and it's, it's going to kill him, but he loves Daniel. So he throws him into the pit. He does what's right according to his word, his law. He throws him to the pit, but yet he's secretly hoping he lives. The next morning, the king can't sleep all night. The next morning, he runs to the pit. He gets to the pit, and the king, he got up and he hurried to the lion's den. When he came near the den, he called to Daniel in a very anguished voice because he's thinking, I've, I've just killed one of my favorite people in the whole wide world. And, and it's a lion. I mean, he's not going to be there, but still he was hopeful. Because even the king thought, you know, God could probably protect him. The king even understood enough about God, even though he wasn't following God. He knew God was that powerful. 
he thought, oh, I hope he's alive. So he goes the next, and he goes, he's, in an anguished voice, he says, Daniel, servant of the living God, has your God, whom you serve continually, been able to rescue you from the lions? And then he waits. He's thinking, is he dead or is he alive? And Daniel answered him after being in the pit all night long with a lion. Daniel responds in, in complete respect and honor of the king. He said, may the king live forever. He doesn't say, how dare you do this to me? I've, I've been a good, loyal person in your kingdom, and I followed you. He didn't say that. He didn't berate him. He said, may the king live forever. My God sent his angel, and he shut the mouths of the lions. They have not hurt me because I was found innocent in his sight, nor have I ever done anything wrong before you, your majesty. The king was overjoyed and gave orders to lift Daniel out of the den. And when Daniel was lifted from the den, no wound was found on him because he had trusted in God. And amazingly, it turns around. Think about this. The enemy will always be seen by God. It may not be today. It may not be tomorrow, but I promise you, if the enemy comes against us, God sees it. And God takes note of that. And God is the one that takes vengeance. We live in forgiveness, just like Daniel said, hey, king, I honor you. He honored the king. So we live in forgiveness, we live in love, but God sees everything. And you know what happens? At the king's command, the men who had falsely accused Daniel were brought in, and then now they were thrown into the lion's den, along with their wives and children. And before they reached the floor of the den, the lions overpowered them and crushed all their bones. The trap that the enemy tries to set for us, when we're following God with all of our heart, the traps of the enemy cannot withstand. God will turn it around and look what happened. The exact trap that he was, they were trying to do to Daniel now flipped back on him, and now they're in the lion's den. And Daniel, he was seated at the right hand of the king, and he was honored. God sees those around you that are treating you poorly and that are jealous. God sees it. You don't have to respond. You pray. You bless people. You be kind to your enemies. It says in Scripture, even the enemies are going to bless you. Then King Darius wrote to all the nations and the people of every language on the earth, and we're still talking about it today. He said to Daniel, may you prosper greatly, Daniel. He said, I now issue a decree that in every part of my kingdom, people must fear and reverence the God of Daniel. It all flipped around, and now the king is saying, hey, you're God? He is mighty. He is powerful enough to close the mouths of lions. For he is a living God, and he endures forever. His kingdom will not be destroyed. His dominion will never end. He rescues and he saves. He performs signs and wonders in the heavens and on earth. He has rescued Daniel from the power of the lions. Our God is mighty. He is more powerful than anything on this earth. With God, all things are possible. You can say to this mountain, move, and it's going to move if you believe it. Daniel would have had to believe the mountain could be moved before he went into the pit. Daniel's mind and his heart was on God. Where is your mind and your heart today, my friend? Where is your mind and heart? Do you believe with God all things are possible? Do you believe God can turn around your situation? God can turn anything around. So Daniel, according to Scripture, prospered. That means he had peace. He was successful. He was blessed. He was, he was God just took him and he, God was glorified through Daniel. Daniel had a mountain-moving mouth, though. Daniel had a mountain-moving life. You see, Daniel asked, Daniel believed, Daniel, because of that, received, and he was blessed. You've got to get it in order. You've got to go to God. You've got to believe. You've got to believe. You've got to ask in order to receive. So we saw Isaiah. We saw Daniel see the mountains move. 
Now we see another person by the name of Moses. Moses has a very interesting life, and I love to talk about Moses. I mean, here is Moses. I mean, I relate to Moses because Moses was adopted, okay? I was adopted at birth, so my, the people that had me, my biological mother, at the delivery of my birth, uh, she gave me up, and nobody wanted me. I was an orphan. I went into foster care for three and a half months, and I don't know any where I was or who I was with. I have no idea. I know nothing about them. But at three and a half months old, I was adopted into a loving family. So now Moses, I can relate to him because when Moses was born, Pharaoh felt threatened by the Hebrews, by the whole race. He knew that if all these Hebrews had babies, and he used the Hebrews as his slaves, he enslaved the Hebrews. For 400 years, Pharaohs enslaved them. He knew if they started having babies, the Hebrew mamas, I'm going to be overtaken and overpowered. There's going to be more people. So Pharaoh took it into his own hands, and he had every Hebrew baby boy that was born tossed into the sea. Okay? So here's Pharaoh. At the time Moses is born, Jochebed, which is Moses' mother, she hid her baby, Moses, when he was born. Because she knew that Pharaoh was going to somehow get her child and throw him into the Nile River. And she was going to hide her baby. God was on this situation. Jochebed trusted in God. God led Jochebed to have her, his older sister Miriam, Moses' older sister, take the three-month-old baby Moses and put him in a basket and put him down the Nile River. So his sister Miriam walks alongside him. And God has perfect timing. I'm telling you, you got a praying mama or a praying grandma. Someone praying for you, mountains can move. How about this? Your prayers can move mountains in other people's lives. So Mama Jochebed is saying, God, this baby belongs to you. God, you take a hold of my baby. You put Moses where he's supposed to go. And God has perfect timing. Miriam had her little brother Moses. They are going down the Nile River in this basket. And at the right perfect time, God sends out Pharaoh's daughter. Pharaoh's daughter comes out. She's a young adult. She comes out in the water. She's bathing, just having a normal day. And she sees this, this young girl coming down the Nile River with baby Moses in this basket. God can move mountains. God can do anything. This was a Hebrew baby. The, the Pharaoh's daughter knew it was a hero, Hebrew baby. Hebrew babies were supposed to be thrown in the Nile River. But God gave this baby favor. She goes into daddy, Pharaoh, and says, Dad, I want to keep this baby. I love this baby. I fell in love with this baby. God, just this one baby. Can we please, please, Pharaoh, can we please, Pharaoh, keep this baby? And God changed the set of circumstances at that moment. Pharaoh agrees to allow his daughter to keep the baby. But what Pharaoh didn't know is he was threatened by all these other babies but the one baby that was going to touch the whole world was that baby. You see, God put that one baby into his palace right there in front of him. You think the enemy's power is greater? It isn't. Baby Moses was right in the palace, right in that presence of Pharaoh growing up. So Moses learned how they talked. Moses grew up learning their ways. He talked like them. He looked like them. He was rich. He was the Pharaoh's grandchild by adoption. But, but Moses had a praying mama, Jochebed, that prayed all these years. And at the perfect time, when Moses became an adult, he could see how the Hebrew slaves were being treated and it bothered him. Instead of him wanting to enslave them more and punish them and hurt them more, something happened in Moses because he had a praying mama. Something happened in Moses where he knew this was not right. He felt compassion 
for all these Hebrew boys and, and men who were enslaved. And, and God did a number on Moses because he had a praying mama at home praying about this. And so he got in a situation. He was trying to help a Hebrew. And then he ends up accidentally, maybe on kind of on purpose, killing one of the leaders of the slaves. So because he killed an Egyptian, Moses knew that the penalty for that was death. So Moses gets out of town, he leaves. And God had a plan. God had a mountain moving plan. Moses leaves and a whole story unfolds. Moses goes later on to a mountain and he ends up having an encounter with a burning bush. And God talks to Moses through the burning bush. And he, tells, he says to Moses through the burning bush, take off your sandals. You are on holy ground. And Moses has an encounter with God that changed his life forever. And then God commissions Moses in this moment. Mountains are going to move through Moses. And he says, Moses, I'm going to now have you lead my people that you now saw in Egypt. Moses, now I'm going to have you lead them out of slavery. You know what Moses' response to that was? God, what? I am slow of speech. Moses didn't say, oh, yeah, God, I'll do it. Yeah, that'll be great. No, Moses' response was, God, what? You want me to go? How can I do that, Lord? I'm slow of speech. And God talks back to Moses and lets him know. He's, he's like, you know, basically, how dare you? I've called you. I've chosen you. You know, God has chosen everyone listening to me right now. God has chosen you to speak to your kids. God has chosen you to speak to your spouse. God has chosen you to speak to your family, to your coworkers. God has chosen you to move those mountains. Jochebed was a praying mother. It didn't look like she was ever going to see her son again once she gave him up to go to the palace. It looked like she gave him up to be an Egyptian. She, her mouth was opened. Her faith was intact. Every day, Mama, Mama Jochebed prayed for Moses. God, you can move the mountain. God, with you, all things are possible. God, it may not look like anything for 20 years, but God, I believe you're going to use my son Moses to send those in slaves out. God, I believe my son Moses isn't going to love riches and love popularity more than you, God. God, his heart's going to turn to you. And the day came. And here's Moses on the mountain. This is what God said to Moses. He said, you shall speak and you will, I will put the words in your mouth and I will help you and your brother Aaron speak to Pharaoh. And it started going into motion. That mountain meeting with God. Have you had a meeting, a, a meeting on a mountain? Have you met with God in your home? Say that's your mountain. Mountains are all around us, aren't they? In, in some sense, either we've got a mountain that we need healing. We've got a mountain in a marriage. We've got a mountain in a kid. Whatever it is, what, what is your mountain? In other words, what mountain do you need to have moved in your life? Everybody has something. So God is saying to Moses, he says, you are going to see the deliverance of my people, Moses. The mountains are going to move if you trust me. And he goes on this journey with God. And to make a long story short, the mountains move. One after another. Moses goes before Pharaoh over and over and over again. And finally... The day comes when Moses, it's over a million people that follow Moses and they're leaving the Pharaoh, they're leaving Egypt. But Moses gets to a place where there's a water before him on one side, the Red Sea and the Egyptian army on the other. And he's at, he's at a place that he's going to get stuck. You ever felt that way? You're stuck? It looks like there's no way out. And you know what Moses said to the people? He said, don't be afraid. Stand firm. You will see the deliverance. The Lord will bring you today. You're going to see the deliverance. You're going to see the mountain move. God is going to do it. If you believe and trust in God, he said, the Egyptians you see today, you will never see again. The Lord will fight for you. You need only to be still. 
you got to move your mouth. you got to ask. you got to believe you, and you're going to receive. And then Moses put that staff in the water and God behind it, and God heard the faith of Moses. And God did what only God can do. He moved the mountain. He parted the Red Sea, and all those people, over a million people, went through the Red Sea and got them into the Promised Land to the other side. They get all the way across. The Egyptian army gets in the middle, and God closes the sea on them and they're wiped out. God fought the battle. You got battles? Give it to God. I'm going to pray for you right now, and I'm going to believe that you're going to see a mountain move in your life. Father, we give the battles to you. Father, you're a mountain-moving God. Father, we have faith to see the mountain move. God, you did it for Moses and millions of people to cross over on dry ground in the middle of the sea. God, you can move our mountains. God, with you, all things are possible. Lord, we give it all to you. We trust you. We have faith to believe it, God, and we will receive your deliverance in Jesus' name. Remember, with God, all things are possible for you, my friend. Listen, you got a battle, give it to God. Hello, everybody. I have a special box that has come to me from Israel. I'm so excited. I'm going to open my box with you to show you what's inside. I have this amazing lotion. Look at this. I'm so excited. It's called Nahara from the Jordan River. And I am telling you, this lotion whoops, smells so good. And I want to get this to you, my friends. I want you to have one of these lotions. It's, it's so soft and refreshing, and the scent is very soft. It smells like something that would come from the Mediterranean. It has a part of the Jordan River in it. When you get this, you're blessing Israel. And I have not only this, but I have a special journal I want to get to you. And this is a journal that's called, it says on the top, Possible, Broken Becomes Beautiful. And this is a journal with scriptures in it, and it's going to have places for you to write. It has some pictures of me in different places in the world. And so I want to get this to you. And my final gift I have for you, this wonderful hat. I love hats. My theme verse that God has for this ministry and for you is with God, all things are possible. With God, all things are possible. For a $50 donation to the ministry, you'll get all three items. You're blessing Israel. Then you're wearing scripture. You can tell people what possible means. You've got the wonderful scent and a journal with scripture in it. You can take the journal with you wherever you go. For a $50 donation to the ministry, we use that donation to take God's word around the world. It's a purpose for us to be able to use it to help people. People are getting saved in this ministry. People are turning broken hearts are being healed. We're seeing things happen all over the world. Call us, go online, and be a part of what we're doing for the kingdom. And remember, in your life with God, all things are possible for you. God bless you, my friend.